both Harry and Terry's girlfriends went away on a business trip for the weekend. During the whole time, the couples were texting and sending each other pictures. On Sunday morning, the girls asked their boyfriends to send them their selfies. Harry sent a selfie where he was smiling in the kitchen. Terry sent a selfie of himself in the bathroom. One of the girlfriends knew immediately that her boyfriend was cheating. Who was it and how did the girlfriend know? It was Harry. Look at that lipstick mark on the glass on top of the kitchen counter. Becca and Tom are a couple. One of them rented a scooter from Brown Scooters and now needs to pay for the ride. A worker from the scooter company comes to charge the couple $15 that they owe. Becca and Tom start arguing over who should pay for the scooter. Becca says that Tom was the one who wrote it, so he should pay for it. But Tom says that it was Becca who wrote it and she should pay for it. Who is lying? Becca is lying. Take a look at Becca's footprints. They lead directly to the scooter. There were three thefts at a local supermarket. One in February, one in May, and one in July. Thankfully, the security camera recorded the footage of those three days. The store manager called Detective Moore, asking to solve the crime. The detective took a close look at the footage and noticed one detail that helped him solve the mystery. Take a look at the images and try to figure out who the thief is. In all three videos, there is a pregnant lady. In the video from February, she looks about seven months pregnant. But in the other videos, from May and July, her belly looks exactly the same. This means that she is the thief. She must have been faking her pregnancy all along. Dr. O'Brien invented the time machine and traveled all the way back to prehistoric times. Take a look at this picture and see if you can spot Dr. O'Brien amongst other prehistoric people carrying out their activities. That's easy. It's the guy with the flashlight. He must have taken one with him when he set off on his journey. Katie was running late for class. When she finally arrived at the classroom, she accidentally dropped the pile of textbooks she was holding. It produced a loud thump, making the entire classroom stare at her. At that moment, Katie drew the attention of 20 eyes. How many people were in the classroom that day? There were 11 people. 10 people have a pair of eyes each, right? Add Katie to the equation. That makes a total of 11 people in the room. Police officer Dave received a call late at night. A famous chemist went missing from his lab. After searching the lab thoroughly, Dave found a note with ransom numbers scribbled on it. The note read 26, 3, 58, 28, 27, 57, 16. Based on the note, Dave managed to find the scientist and arrest the criminals who had taken him. What was written in the encrypted note and how did Dave understand it? The chemist is smart. Each number in the note corresponds to an element in the periodic table. So the element that corresponds to 26 is Fe, iron. Number 3 is Li, lithium, and 58 is Ce, cerium. If you use this logic, you can figure out that the first line spells Felice, and the numbers in the second line stand for Nicholas. After figuring out the names, Dave tracked the men down and arrested them. Helena finally got herself a new guitar. She wanted to play it right away, but she had to go to school. She locked the instrument inside her room and left. When she got home in the evening, the guitar was gone. She knew it must have been one of her family members as they always played pranks on one another. So she questioned each one of them. Helena's mother said she hadn't even seen the guitar the girl had bought. 
Her dad said that he had seen it when he passed by Helena's room, but he swore he hadn't done anything to it. Helena's brother said he hadn't gone upstairs the whole day, so he hadn't seen the guitar either. Helena solved the mystery instantly. Can you figure it out? Her dad was lying. He said he'd seen the guitar when passing by the girl's room, but that's impossible. Helena locked the door when she left. A bank was robbed by masked strangers. One of the robbers asked the teller to give them all the money hidden in the bank safe. But suddenly, the teller's phone rang. It was his mother. The robber told the guy to pick up the phone to avoid arousing suspicion. On the phone, the teller asked, Is there an emergency, mother? Call me when you get home and I'll help you with the dinner. Then he hung up. Five minutes later, while the robbers were still in the bank, the police arrived at the crime scene. How did the police know about the robbery? The teller was smart. While he was speaking on the phone with his mother, he pressed the mute button while he was saying some of the words. So what his mother heard on the other end of the line was, emergency, mother, call help. On the outskirts of a town, there was a haunted house. A group of friends decided to check it out. They went there at night, but as soon as they got there, one of the friends refused to go inside and tried to stop the others. But they just laughed and left him behind. There were terrible crashing sounds coming from the house, and then everything went still. John never saw his friends again. How did John understand that there was something seriously wrong with the house? John was very attentive. He noticed that there was lots of footprints leading towards the house, but none going away. A famous hotel has seven floors. Five people are staying on the first floor. Eight people are staying on the second floor. Eleven people are staying on the third floor, and so on. Each next floor has three more people living there than the previous one. Which floor calls the elevator most often? The first floor. Any person staying on a floor other than the first has to call the elevator to reach their destination. In a small town, three teachers asked for sick leave on the same day. Janet said she had got into a car accident and broke her leg. Now she was having difficulty walking with the cast and all. Emma complained she'd had a very unfortunate workout and injured her neck. She couldn't even turn her head. And Tina said that she'd fallen from her bike and hurt her arm. One of the teachers is lying. Can you tell who? It's Janet. She claims she's having difficulty walking with the cast, but she doesn't even have crutches. You wake up and find yourself trapped in a room with four doors in front of you. You hear a monster coming, so you check the door quickly. The leftmost door has a sign on it saying, take the door on the right to break free. The second door also has a sign saying, it's the right door. The third door has a sign, freedom is just right in front of you. And the last door has a sign saying, don't trust the signs. Which door should you choose? Well, there's a little bit of wordplay here. Let's see why. The first door says to take the door on the right. The second one says it's the right door. Not the correct door, but the door on the right. The third door says freedom is just right in front of you. That just doesn't make any sense, does it? You can interpret this statement as pointing at the door just on your right. Well, that's it. It's the last door. It does tell you not to trust the other signs, but it doesn't tell you that they're false, does it? 
a famous rich businessman got sick. He needed a professional doctor and was ready to pay a lot of money. Many fake doctors applied, hoping to get that amount. Take a look at their resumes and tell which doctor is the real one. It says that Mr. Robert Greene was born on November 31st, but this date doesn't exist. There are just 30 days in November, so this resume must be fake. As for Dr. Matthias Johnson, there's no city mentioned in the place of birth, only the state. If I were that rich gentleman, I'd definitely pick the first candidate. Leslie lived in a house where she wasn't allowed to have any pets. But one day, she found a cute, lonely dog that didn't have an owner. She couldn't resist and took it home. A few weeks later, the house owner knocked on her door. Leslie hid the dog and opened the door. Still, the owner instantly knew that she was keeping a dog. How did he know? She forgot to hide the dog's food. A huge pack is still in her room. Tatum got messages from three different guys who wanted to go out with her. Zion, Toby, and Brick. She loved reading, especially detective stories, and she told that to each of the guys. Can you guess which of the guys lied to her based on their responses? Zion. Sure, I absolutely love detective stories. My grandpa knew Sherlock Holmes himself. Toby. Same. Last year I read 200 books and most were detective stories. Brick. Wow, that's awesome. My mom owns a bookstore in New York and she always brings me books, so I love reading too. Zion was lying. Sherlock Holmes is a book character, and he never existed in real life, so his grandpa couldn't possibly know him. Eloise was having a birthday party. She invited three people over and got three presents. A pair of gloves, a bag of makeup, and sunglasses. However, Eloise didn't like one of the presents. Can you guess which one and why? She didn't like the pair of gloves. Both of them are right-handed. Three zombie girls are chasing Jake. One of them is his ex-girlfriend. Can you tell which one? Take a closer look at Jake's shoulder. He has a tattoo that says J plus L. These must be the first letters of his and his girlfriend's names. If you take another closer look, you can see that zombie girl B has a tag attached to her leg saying Lucy. It must be her name, and it starts exactly with an L. So zombie B must be his ex. Esme went for a walk in the woods and got lost. She's been wandering around until she approached the witch's house. She pet her cat and asked if the witch can send her home. The witch agreed to let Esme go if the girl guessed her name. Luckily, there was a hint. The capital of Romania, the capital of Oman, the capital of Spain, and the capital of Egypt. Esme got it right. Can you guess what the witch's name is? Romania has only one capital letter, and it's R. The capital letter of Oman is O. Spain gives us S, and from Egypt we get E. So, it seems like the witch's name is Rose. Right before a restaurant was about to open, somebody stole all the money from the office. A detective arrived for interrogation. A cook said he was working hard and didn't have time to walk or gaze around, so he didn't see anything. The security guy said that he was in the bathroom and didn't steal anything. The waiter said that he saw one visitor going to the office, but somehow didn't realize that wasn't okay and didn't stop him. The waiter was arrested for stealing the money. Why? The restaurant was closed, and there couldn't have been any visitors inside. Indiana wanted to make her mom the best birthday present ever, but had zero ideas. So she decided to break into her mom's computer to see what she had in her online shopping cart. 
Her mom's computer required a password, and Indiana didn't know it. Luckily, there was a hint. 914491141. Can you guess what the password is? Each letter is the number of a respective letter in the alphabet. Ninth letter is I. Letter number 14 is N. Number 4 is D. Ninth is I again. The first one is A. The 14th is N. And then A again. So the password is Indiana. Emma, Maeve, and David like apple juice. Anna, Layla, and Ava like orange juice. Following the same logic, what kind of juice does Atlas prefer? Emma, Maeve, and David have just one letter A in their names, so they're grouped together. Anna, Layla, and Ava have two A's in their names. Atlas has two A's in the name, so she prefers orange juice. William was on vacation in Thailand. One day, he met a beautiful girl there and approached her. He asked her on a date, and the girl agreed to go out with him if William guessed her name. Since she really liked him too, she gave him a hint. My name is two-sevenths of Germany, two-fifths of Nepal, two-ninths of Singapore, and one-fifth of Spain. Can you guess what the girl's name is? Two-seven of Germany means two out of seven letters in the word Germany, which are G-E. Two-fifths of Nepal gives us N-E. Two-ninths of Singapore adds up to S-I, and one-fifth of Spain is S. So the girl's name is Genesis. The police have been looking for the person who robbed the city bank. They figured he'd try to leave the country, so they arrived at the airport and started questioning the people. One man, Bryce, said that he was a geography teacher going on his vacation to Germany, Poland, and Wonderland. Another suspect, Savannah, said she was a model going to Italy for a photo shoot. Max, a student, said that he was going home to Ukraine for the semester break. Can you tell who the robber is? It's Bryce. Wonderland is a fictional country. If he really were a geography teacher, he'd know that it doesn't exist. Annika woke up and found out that she wasn't in her room, but in some dungeon. She tried to open the door, but it required a password. The hint said SMTWT. Can you guess the following two letters? This is the sequence of the first letters of weekdays. S for Sunday, M for Monday, and then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. It means that the final two are F and S, Friday and Saturday. Mrs. Lawrence had three teenage daughters, Serenity, Kennedy, and Autumn. They were all grounded and couldn't leave the house. However, one of the neighbors reported that they've seen one of the girls at the mall but couldn't tell which one. Mrs. Lawrence came home and asked the girls what they were doing. Serenity said that she was reading all day. Kennedy said that she was watching a movie in her room and never left the house. Autumn said that she had spent the day in the garden. Mrs. Lawrence immediately knew who lied. Can you tell? Look, Kennedy and Autumn have dirty shoes. That's okay for Autumn because she said she'd been in the garden. Kennedy said that she'd never left her room, so her shoes can't possibly be that dirty. She must have lied. Dakota got in a car accident and was suffering from memory loss. She was a popular girl at school, and everyone wanted to be friends with her. Since Dakota couldn't remember who her friends were, one of the girls decided to pretend she was her bestie. On Monday, three girls visited Dakota. Ava brought her some snacks and chocolates. Nova got her earrings that Dakota had wanted to buy. Arden made her a friendship bracelet and brought a movie. Can you tell which girl isn't Dakota's friend? It's Nova. She got her earrings, but Dakota's ears aren't even pierced, so she couldn't have wanted to get them. 
Can you tell which werewolf is real here? Werewolves only turn from a person into a wolf at night and when it's the full moon. On the left, it's a day, so the person can't turn into a werewolf. It must be a costume. On the right, it's night, but there's no full moon, so the person shouldn't look like this as well. In the middle, everything seems normal. It's night, it's full moon, and the person has turned into a werewolf. It must be the one. Can you tell who's a real mermaid here? The second one is a guy, so he definitely isn't a mermaid. The girl on the right is chilling in the sun, and she's out of the water. Mermaids wouldn't do that because they dry out in the sun. So the real mermaid must be the one on the left. Take a look at these three people. Can you recognize the real vampire? If you look closely at the first one, he's wearing a silver chain. Real vampires can't stand silver, so this must be fake. The girl in the middle is wearing a silver bracelet, so she doesn't fit either. But the third vampire seems to be valid, at least at first sight. A teenage girl, Skylar, got poisoned after school, and Detective Callum had to solve the case. He interrogated the classmates, and one girl said that she saw another girl, Ayla, adding something to Skylar's water bottle. However, no one else has seen it. He talked to Ayla's boyfriend, who said that she was with him after school. Another witness was a guy working at a cafe who saw Ayla and her boyfriend there and even showed pictures from the security camera. Still, Ayla was arrested for poisoning Skylar. Why? Take a look at the picture of Ayla. She has a tattoo on her left arm. However, in the security pictures, the girl who was in the cafe with Ayla's boyfriend has a tattoo on her right arm. Turned out, Ayla had a twin sister no one knew about who covered up for her. Mary is a mermaid. She lives under the sea with her mother, Marina. Mary is 19 years old and Marina is twice her age. How old would Mary be when Marina is 99? Eighty, because Mary is 19 years younger than Marina. Mary is hanging out at her favorite spot in the ocean. Both of the following facts are true. If all the goldfish sit on all the seashells, one fish per shell, one goldfish will stay without a shell. And if every two goldfish decide to share a seashell, one shell will be left without a goldfish. Can you count the correct number of seashells and goldfish? There are four goldfish and three seashells. Mary has a crush on Carl. He's a human. Can you find him among these three guys? The first guy has a mermaid tattoo on his arm, but it doesn't prove anything. The second guy is wearing a seashell necklace, but maybe he just loves jewelry. But the third guy is definitely Carl. His face and name are printed on this diving coach poster. Mary goes to a sea witch and asks her to turn her into a human. The witch says, okay, but first I gotta check if you deserve my gift. Solve my riddle. When you have 10, you have 10. When you have three, you have three. And when you have one, you have none. What is it that you have? Can you help Mary out? The correct answer is choice. Mary gets her legs and goes on a date with Carl. They're having dinner in a restaurant on the beach, but can you guess who should pay for this scooter? Mary! Only her footprints lead to the scooter, therefore, she arrived at this vehicle, and Carl walked from the other side. Carl and Mary keep on walking on the shore and see these four guys playing in the sand. Suddenly, Carl freaks out and runs away. Why?
This guy is a ghost. He doesn't have a shadow. Carl invites Mary to a birthday party. He introduces her to his best friends, Bob, Elle, Otto, and Hannah. Can you guess what's so special about them? They all have palindrome names. The next day, Mary goes to a job interview. She arrives at an office building with a metal door. It's locked, but there's a note next to the combination lock. It only has four words, starfish, pearl, fire, and turtle. Can you help Mary crack this code? All things in this list can be found underwater, except for the fire. So the password is fire. At the job interview, the HR manager shows Mary four identical glasses with water and different objects inside them. He asks her to find a glass which contains the most water. Can you help her out? It seems like the water level is even in all the glasses, but what happens if we remove the objects? The glass that contains the smallest object will have the most water. So Mary should choose the second glass. Mary gets a job as a waitress in a restaurant. On her first day, one client runs away without paying the check. The manager says, no worries, I know him. He has four sisters and he's probably hiding in one of their houses. The manager is not a policeman, so he can't just break into their houses. That's why he looks through his sister's fresh Instagram posts. Can you spot who's hiding the thief? Take a closer look at the second and fourth pictures. Both selfies reveal fragments of male hands, but only this guy is wearing the same ring as the thief. Gotcha! The next day, a group of six friends celebrates their birthday in a restaurant. All except Kyle and Kitty order cherry punch. They drink it and five minutes later get sick. Mary calls doctors and they conclude that someone had poisoned the punch. She suspects Kyle and Kitty, so she asks them just one question. Why did you order other drinks? Kitty replies, I ordered tea because I'm allergic to strawberries. Even one small bite gives me a red rash. And Kyle replies, I'm not proud of it, but I'm really broke. I took coffee just because it's cheaper. Who's lying? Kitty, she said that she was allergic to strawberries, but the guests drank cherry punch. Carl invites Mary on a romantic weekend in the country. They stay in a fancy hotel and go for a walk. When they come back, they see that someone broke into the room and rummaged through their stuff. They question three suspects. Their neighbor says, Sorry, I had a skydiving class. I arrived five minutes ago. The cleaner says, I spent all day cleaning rooms on the fourth floor, so I haven't had time to clean up your room yet. And the lobby boy says, I was dealing with a tourist group from Sweden all day. We had some booking issues. Who's lying? The Cleaner. This hotel is a three-story. Carl and Mary go on a boat trip and face a huge storm. They end up on a deserted island. After a while, they get really hungry and go for a walk to find something to eat. There are four options. Cornfield with fresh harvest, a garden with wild sweet potatoes, oranges from this tree, or berries from this bush. Can you help the guys make the safest choice? The boogeyman in the cornfield is moving, and it looks pretty unfriendly. There are sharp thorns on these berry bushes. Creepy spiders are hiding in this orange tree, so they better choose sweet potatoes. Mary and Carl keep on walking and find a tunnel. Unfortunately, they get trapped inside. There are three possible exits. A family of mountain lions is hiding behind the first door. The second door leads to a room constructed from magnifying glass. The hot sun instantly fries anyone who enters. And there's a lake with crocodiles behind the third door. Can you help the guys escape? They should wait until nighttime and go through the second door. Mary and Carl find two identical basketballs in the field. 
They have the same diameter and weight, but one of them is solid and the other one is hollow. How can they identify the solid ball without picking it up or bouncing it? They should push both balls from the top of a mountain. The one that reaches the bottom faster is the solid ball because it needs less mechanical energy to rotate. Suddenly, the sea witch pops out of nowhere and teleports Mary and Carl into a dungeon. There's a weird note on the door. JMNBJ3SHLDR. They need to crack this code to escape. Can you help them? Replace every letter in this note with the one before it in the alphabet, and we get knock three times. They knock three times and the door opens. The guys enter a spacious hallway with three tunnels leading outside. Hungry leopards are waiting in the first tunnel. In the second tunnel, there's a tank with piranhas. Nobody can cross it and stay alive. And there's a giant fire-breathing pterosaur behind the third door. Which route is more or less safe? To crack this riddle, we should remember two things. Pterosaurus don't breathe fire. That's what dragons do. Moreover, they got extinct many millions of years ago. So this third door is the best choice. You ready? Let's go! Nash works with three women, Madison, Samantha, and Gabriella. He's been in love with one of them for months. Take a look at the picture of them having a conversation. Can you tell which of the women Nash is in love with? Psychologists say we tend to point our feet toward the person we like the most in the group. Nash's feet are pointing at Madison, so his secret crush must be her. A group of friends, Abby, Beck, Tom, Flynn, and Ethan, were spending an evening together eating and talking. Abby knew her best friend Beck had a secret crush on someone, but her friend never told her who the crush was. At some point, Beck cracked a joke and everyone started laughing. Abby paid closer attention to something and immediately figured out who Beck's crush was. Can you guess it too? When people laugh, they tend to look at those who they like the most. So let's see who Beck is looking at. Ooh, seems like it's Tom. Emily's won the lottery, and now she can choose her prize. There are three options, a brand new Ferrari, a Gucci handbag, and Jimmy Choo shoes. Take a closer look at them and tell which prize she should choose. Emily should choose the handbag. The logos of Ferrari and Jimmy Choo are wrong, so the car and the shoes must be fake. Esme got lost in the forest, again! This time, it didn't take her long to find at least the old witch's house. She petted the cat and asked if the witch could help her get out of the forest. Again! The witch agreed, but on one condition. Esme had to solve her riddle. If she succeeded, the witch would send her home. And if she failed, Esme would stay with the witch and the cat forever. Esme had to agree. The witch gave her three sticks and asked her to turn them into six without breaking any. Esme managed to do the task. How? Three sticks are exactly enough to make the Roman six out of them. Like this. Take a look at these two women going to the opera. Can you tell which one of them is a model of a popular brand? Both women have Louis Vuitton bags, but take a closer look at the logos. The logo on the right is wrong, so the bag must be fake. It means that the woman on the left is the face of the brand. The Millers and the Johnsons are going on a vacation. Can you tell which family has a daughter? Take a closer look at their suitcases. The Millers have two suitcases, but the Johnsons have three. The extra one must be their daughter's, who's probably just left for a while. Let's move to Norway. After the Christmas break, 
two twin sisters, Alicia and Ada, came to visit their mother. However, one of the sisters has a boyfriend from Thailand who she visited right before her mother. Can you tell which one? Norway is a cold country in the north. Also, it's winter. But unlike her twin sister, Ada is tanned. It's probably because she just spent her vacation in some warm country, like Thailand, at her boyfriend's place. So it must be her. A chemist has discovered a new element. Three days later, he suddenly disappeared. Ben, his intern, is supposed to finish the scientist's work. However, all the data is on the chemist's computer, and Ben doesn't know the passcode. He only knows that the passcode is his daughter's name, which the scientist has never mentioned. Luckily, there's a hint. Can you guess the daughter's name? Her father is a chemist, so the key must be something related to chemistry. How about the periodic table? The ninth element is fluorine, which is F. The 53rd element is iodine, and that's I. Then there's 8, which is oxygen, or O. And the 11th element is sodium, which is Na. So the daughter's name is Fiona, and that's the password. Mr. and Mrs. Murphy are having a walk in a park with three girls, Adeline, Kaylee, and Sienna. Two of them are their nieces, and the other one is their daughter. Can you tell which girl is the daughter? Their daughter is Adeline. Look, both Mr. and Mrs. Murphy have blue eyes. It means that their daughter can only have blue eyes too. Adeline is the only girl with blue eyes. Three girls, May, Reagan, and Tessa, came to a private party and said that they're world-famous top models. However, two of them lied. Can you guess which one of them told the truth and is really a famous top model? She must be wearing a real designer purse, not a copy. Look, the logos of Reagan and Tessa's Dolce & Gabbana purses are wrong, so these girls must be lying. It seems like the real model is May. Gabriel noticed a beautiful woman in a park and came up to meet her. They talked for hours and, among other things, he learned that she's a music teacher, has three siblings and a niece. Gabriel asked her out on a date, but the woman said she'd only agree if he guessed the name of her niece. Gabriel says it's impossible and asked for a hint. The woman said just two words, three, six. Can you help Gabriel guess the name? Remember, she's a music teacher, so it must be somehow connected to music. Let's recall the musical notes. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti. The third one is mi, and the sixth one is la. If we put them together, we get Mila. That must be the woman's niece's name. Voila! It's date night! At the end of a school break, Elle returned to her class to find a short love note on her desk. She looked around to see who it could be from, but she couldn't tell. Still, she had three suspects, the students who'd always been especially nice to her. She asked them directly if they wrote her a note. Martin said he had been busy finishing his homework. Owen said he had been scrolling through his social media feed and hadn't written any notes. Leanna denied writing a note too and said that she had been in the bathroom. However, Elle still guessed who wrote the note. Can you? Look, Leanna's hands are covered in ink. If she really was in the bathroom, her hands would be clean. So she must be lying, and she must be the one who wrote that note. Hey, don't be shy! After a summer break, all students returned to school. Four friends started to talk about what they had been doing all summer. It turned out that all of them had been traveling. Addison said she and her family had taken a trip to Moldova to visit her grandma. Ash said he and his girlfriend had spent the whole two months in Venezuela. Joshua said he'd visited Narnia, and Kira had been to several Asian countries. However, one of the friends actually stayed at home the whole time. Can you tell who?
It's Joshua. Narnia is a fictional country. He probably had a movie marathon that summer. Dan found himself in a dark dungeon and couldn't remember what happened. But he didn't mind, because right in front of him, there were three chests. One of them was full of gold coins, another was full of silver coins, and the third one was full of diamonds. He could take any one of the chests with him. However, outside, there was a vampire waiting for him. What should Dan do? Dan should take the chest with the silver coins. Vampires are afraid of silver, so he'd be able to walk past the vampire. Ka-ching! Ms. Harrelson reported that someone had broken into her house and stolen her grandma's golden watch. Detective Callum was up for the case and interrogated the woman. Ms. Harrelson said she had been vacuum cleaning upstairs when she heard some scratching on the door, followed by footsteps. She was afraid, so she didn't go downstairs until the burglar was gone. When it was over, she found that her watch was stolen. Detective Callum refused to start the case and said that the woman was lying. Why? Ms. Harrelson said that she had been vacuum cleaning when she heard the noise. It just wouldn't be possible, because the vacuum cleaner is very noisy and she couldn't possibly have heard anything. Hope and Luke are a couple living in New York. Luke recently got a new job and left for a work trip to India. In the afternoon, Hope called her boyfriend and asked what he was doing. Luke said he was having a lunch and was going for a business meeting soon. When Luke returned home a week later, Hope broke up with him. Why? When it's afternoon in New York, it's night in India. However, Luke said he had been having a lunch and going for a meeting after. People don't do this at night. He lied. He probably hadn't even been in India. Austin got locked in the room that was going to explode in one minute. Ah, been there, done that. There was a way out, but the door was locked and required a passcode. Take a look at the hint and guess what the passcode is. Each number is the number of lines in the respective letter. There are four lines needed for an E and M. Two for V, two for T, and three for Z. Following the same logic, the passcode is 1332. Good work! Erica works at the Railway Security Service. This morning, she received an emergency alert. There's a person with fake documents trying to escape to Canada by train. Erica and her colleagues found three suspects who look almost the same. Can you identify a criminal just by looking at one's passport? No matter what country a person is from, no passport can have a photo with mountains in the background. So this documents are fake. Bob is a college teacher. He invited his worst student, Dan, for a conversation. Bob wants to test the guy's logical thinking. He says, if you tell a lie, I will expel you from college. And if you tell the truth, I'll still expel you. What should the student say to stay in college? Bob should say, I'm telling lies. This phrase will create a paradox because it cannot be a lie or the truth. Nancy has 10 bowling balls. Her brother Josh decided to check her intelligence. So, he asked Nancy to place those 10 balls in 5 lines, such that each of the lines has exactly 4 balls on them. Can you help her accomplish this task? She should draw a 5-point star and place the 10 balls occupying the corners and the intersection points. Voila! 5 lines with 4 balls in each row. Kevin has been hitchhiking in a desert for hours. Finally, one driver stopped and said, I will give you a ride wherever you want, but first, you gotta crack my riddle. Which letter can make the road larger? 
Can you help Kevin solve this task? The letter B can turn road into broad. Alex is a shepherd. He had 30 sheep, out of which all but 13 ran away. Can you calculate how many sheep Alex has now? He has 13 sheep. The phrase, all but 13 ran away, actually means that all except the 13 escaped. Take a look at these three prisoners. The first guy pushes the iron bars. The second guy shakes muscles with dumbbells. The third guy sits and reads a book. There's a picture hanging on the wall. Can you say for sure who's likely to escape? Take a closer look at the third guy. Can you see the sand under the painting? He must be digging a tunnel and covering it with a picture. So he's the one who wants to escape. All Becky's shoes are black, except two. Also, all Becky's shoes are red, except two. And all Becky's shoes are yellow, except two. Can you calculate how many shoes Becky has in general? Just three, one of each color. Dr. Smith prescribed Dan expensive vitamins. He gave Dan two bottles labeled R and B. The pills are entirely identical. The doctor asked Dan to take one pill daily from the R bottle and one pill from the B bottle. He can't take more or less than that. One morning, Dan was taking out the pills. He took out one pill from the R bottle as usual. And then, by mistake, he took out two from the B bottle. Now Dan has no idea which pill is which. He can't just throw away the expensive pills. What would you suggest? Dan should cut each of the three pills in half and put each half in two piles. Now each of the two piles will contain half of pill R and two halves of pill B. Now, Dan should take one more pill from the R bottle cut it into half, and put the two halves in two different piles. This way, we'll know that each pile will have two halves of pill R and two halves of pill B, or one complete R pill and one complete B pill. Dan can take one pile today and keep the second pile for tomorrow. I am red, but I smell like blue paint. What am I? Red paint. Timmy's mother has three sons. She named her first son April. The next one's name is May. Can you guess the youngest son's name? And the correct answer is Timmy. Pretty obvious, huh? Can you spot what's wrong in this picture? The reflection in the mirrors doesn't match reality. What about this picture? Can you see anything odd? These two ladies seem completely fine, but there's a bandage on this guy's leg. No one would go to a swimming pool if they had big scratches, unless they're a zombie. The king of octopuses has sons, who have six, seven, or eight legs. The one with seven legs always lies, but the one with either six or eight legs always tells the truth. On a certain night, four sons meet and chat. The blue octopus says, we have 28 legs altogether. The green one says, we have 27 legs altogether. The purple one says, we have 26 legs altogether. And the red octopus says, we have 25 legs altogether. Can you identify the color of the sun who's speaking the truth?
The green son is telling the truth. To prove it, let us first assume that one of them is telling the truth. Obviously, three of the four sons lie as they disagree with each other. Let's suppose that the blue octopus is telling the truth. In that case, he has either six or eight legs. And each of the other octopuses is lying, which means they have seven legs. In this case, the total number of legs will be six plus seven plus seven plus seven equals 27 legs or eight plus seven plus seven plus seven equals 29 legs. But the blue octopus said that they have 28 legs altogether. Therefore, he lies. Now we can follow the same logic and check the remaining three suns. And we'll find out that only the green octopus is telling the truth. I have an eye, but cannot see. I'm faster than any man alive, but have no limbs. What am I? The correct answer is hurricane. I know a word of letters three. Add two and there will be fewer. Can you guess the word? The correct answer is few. I have a beard without being a man. I'm green, but I'm not a lizard. I'm white, but I'm not snow. Who am I? The correct answer is leak. A wicked wizard has imprisoned Billy in his tower. Billy ran away from the wizard, but now he needs to choose between these three doors leading outside the tower. There's a toxic gas behind the first door. The second path is full of poisonous scorpions and snakes. And behind the third door, there's a pride of lions which haven't eaten for three years. Which way is the safest? The third one. The lions can't starve for three years and still be alive. Monica adores real estate. She used to spend $300,000 per house and acquired property worldwide. She realized that she had too many houses at one point. So she started selling them at $30,000 per house. How is that possible if she was obviously losing money? Before selling her property, Monica used to be a billionaire. Since she started losing money, she became only a millionaire. I'm full of holes, but I still hold water. What am I? A sponge. Sarah's mother has two sons and one daughter. The son's names are Josh and John. What's the daughter's name? Sarah, you're in a room with three monkeys. One monkey has a banana, one has a stick, and one has nothing. Can you tell for sure who's the smartest primate in the room? You. The sun bakes me, the hand breaks me, the foot treads me, the mouth tastes me. What am I? The correct answer is grapes. Bobby participated in a brain teaser contest. The host blindfolded Bobby and gave him a basket with 25 red apples, 47 green apples, and three yellow apples. What's the minimum number of apples that Bobby has to pick to ensure that there are at least two apples of different colors? he should pick at least 48 apples. There's a slight chance he might pick up 47 green apples in a row. The Smiths are having a family dinner. A grandfather, a grandmother, two fathers, two mothers, one brother, two sisters, two sons, two daughters, one daughter-in-law, and one mother-in-law need to sit at a table. There are only seven chairs available in the room. 
How many more chairs do they have to borrow to sit down all together for the dinner if everyone requires a separate chair? They don't need additional chairs. There are only seven people. A grandfather married a grandmother. They have a son who has married a woman. Together, they have a son and two daughters, so there are only seven people at the dinner. What has to be broken before you can use it? Any ideas? An egg. 